of uh, Technology Guwahati, where he has been working since 1997. He completed his PhD from IIT Kanpur in the area of rotor dynamics in 1997. Just after PhD, he worked in Regional Engineering College Hamirpur, which is in Himachal Pradesh, India, for a year during 1996 to 97. He worked as research officer for one year in 2001 in University of Wales, Swansea, UK, and as Dart Fellow in Technical University of Darmstadt, Germany in 2011 for two months. Dr. Rajiv Tiwari works in the area of rotor dynamics and design of roller bearings. He has more than 250 papers in international journals and conferences. He has successfully organized number of national and international conferences and short-term courses in the area of vibrations and rotor dynamics. He has authored a book on rotor systems from CRC Press USA in 2017, and he has developed web and video video-based courses under NPTEL on mechanical vibrations and rotor dynamics. He has been offering consultancy for last several years to Indian industries like ISRO, Intervendrum, Combat Vehicle R&D established CVRDE Chennai, Tata Bearings Kharagpur, NBC Bearings, apart from other local industries in the northeast of India. Professor Tiwari has been featured consecut consecutively for the last two years among world's top 2% influential scientist list created by Stanford University. He has recently joined as associate editor to the Journal of Vibration and Control in Sage Publications and Journal of Vibration Engineering and Technology Springer Nature Publications. Also, he is in World, uh, Worldwide Technical Committee on Rotor Dynamics of International Federation of Machines and Mechanisms. So now I invite uh, Professor Tiwari to enlighten us on this very interesting topic. Thank you for a nice introduction. Oh, okay. Now let me share my screen. So hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so good morning to all of you. Uh, so I think for last two, three days, you must be listening very interesting topic on condition monitoring of machineries. And this is also in continuation of that. I hope uh, uh, the new topic which I am introducing, especially uh, integration of uh, rotor system with the magnetic bearing, uh, especially for condition monitoring purpose, uh, I will be able to convey the uh, the message. So. Yeah, so this is the overview of my presentation. So first I will introduce some application of magnetic bearing in uh, industrial applications. And then I will come to the introduction of magnetic bearing and its modeling with integrated with the rotor system. And then I will introduce concept of uh, suppression of fault effects with magnetic bearing and then its identification and uh, I will touch upon some of the model based, the physics based, uh, how to suppress the faults and its identification, especially for the crack in shafts or unbalance in the rotor or even we have worked on the the gear transmission error suppression. So uh, related to that few case studies I will uh, show 
some videos also I'll uh, demonstrate and I'll give uh, what is the possibility of research in this area uh, at the end, in the end. So let me begin with uh, some of the industrial application of magnetic bearing in the rotating machinery. So, uh, so these are all work by other researchers. So like Mushi uh, in 2010 and 12, they use the magnetic bearing in a rotor system uh, to generate the aerodynamic uh, load which gives instability into the rotor. So to study that, they they floated the rotor on two magnetic bearing at ends. So th those two bearings were the supportive bearing. In between, they used two uh, additional uh, magnetic bearing to uh, mimic the similar effect as uh, aerodynamical loads comes onto the blades of turbo machinery that generally gives instability. So they wanted to give instability through this and then they wanted to control that instability to demonstrate that can be controlled through the magnetic bearing. So this is one of the application and this is the test trick which they used. So these two end bearings were supporting the rotated uh, rotor. In between these two were giving the disturbance in the form of aerodynamic forces and the end bearings were suppressing that effect. Apart from this, uh, people used uh, magnetic bearing for rub related uh, suppression. So uh, you can see there is a rotor and there is a stator generally casing uh, will be there in any rotating machinery. So the rotor like blades uh, or turbine blades may touch the stator if excessive vibration is there. So here they demonstrated that if we use AMB and through proper control of that, uh, we can avoid such uh, dangerous contact of the blade with the stator. So this is uh, another application in which, so this is the test trick they used in which this is the magnetic bearing and uh, supported on conventional bearings. And here the rotor was having a small clearance with the stator. So if AMB is not operating, then the possibility of the rotor contacting with the stator was there. But with the application of AMB, they could be able to run the rotor without touching the stator. So this is one of the another application. Uh, also, people mimic the similar behavior as the oil whip. So you can see here there is a general bearing and we know that the rotor all often get into instability, especially the oil whip instability. And that also people try to suppress using uh, this kind of active device, uh, magnetic actuators. And this is the test trick for which, uh, through which they demonstrated. So this is the fluid film bearing and instability may come from here. And they used uh, magnetic bearing to suppress the, the uh, oil whip instability. Uh, even in the compressors, so there is a instable uh, phenomena, the surge surge phenomena is there in which uh, the flow of the pump pressure air get disturbed uh, and that is an unstable state of the compressor. So uh, Yoon, they demonstrated that uh, we can able to suppress the surge instability in the pump, especially it occurs because of uh, if there is a large clearance between the uh, compressor blade and the casing, then there is a possibility of a reversal of the flow and that may give instability. So 
uh, using uh, this magnetic actuator they control the clearance between the uh, blade and the casing and uh, and then they could able to uh, run the compressor in the stable zone uh, using this device so this is the test trick for them so this is the uh, compressor and this is the outlet pipe inlet pipe and this is the uh, there are two radial uh, bearing uh, number two that is radial bearing and in between there is a thrust bearing which is supporting a rotor this is the compressor and uh, using this they were uh, adjusting the axial moment of the of the rotor so that the casing and the blade clearance can be maintained to a particular level so that uh, their performance is uh, better and at the same time the surge instability can be avoided uh, some more applications of the magnetic bearing before we go into more detail of the modeling and analysis uh, especially uh, for the rotor dynamic aspect so magnetic bearing uh, they, are, they are being used in turbo molecular pump which is used for generating very high uh, vacuum uh, and the operate uh, operation of this is very high it means the speed is very high order of uh, 1 lakh rpm it runs so and because of that it can generate very high vacuum uh, this is a typical magnetic actuator eight pole magnetic actuator or the four pair of pole uh, magnetic actuator and this is the core which generally is there in the uh, shaft here and uh, other application of this is or advantage of this is that there is no contact between the rotor and the stator so this is free of contact and so there is no lubrication so it can be used for clean and sterile uh, rooms for medical applications or transporting some aggressive or pure media like nuclear uh, materials uh, there are other applications of uh, magnetic bearing like centrifuge which is used to separate suspension in liquid this also rotates at very high speed so that the separation of the suspension in uh, liquid can be uh, performed other application of the uh, magnetic being is the flywheel st uh, energy storage so this is just like a, a ups but this is a mechanical ups in which uh, the energy is stored in flywheel in the form of kinetic energy and whenever you need uh, energy uh, it can be again converted into electrical energy uh, so is having application not only in the uh, small scale but a small uh, bigger scale also like people are using very big uh, flywheels to even for the storage of the energy in power plants uh, as well as uh, now the e-mobility applications are coming up uh, charging up the battery is a bigger problem especially the chemical batteries but this kind of uh, uh, devices can be quickly uh, can store energy and it can be put in the vehicle so already some uh, uh, like Skoda uh, they have already started making this kind of uh, uh, energy storage device which can be quickly uh, charged or it can be quickly store kinetic energy and that can be used for uh, moving the electrical vehicles because it can be again converted into electrical energy whenever it is required and uh, the best part is this is a mechanical device there is no chemical in this so that is environment friendly also and life is uh, very long maybe 20 years for one particular device unlike uh, the chemical batteries they need to be replaced 
or after every three years. Other applications of the magnetic bearings are in the aerospace applications or the satellite applications. So in satellites to have uh, its uh, attitude control or dynamic compensation or orientation of the uh, satellite toward the earth for taking uh, pictures. Uh, so these devices, the especially the reaction wheel is used to uh, based on the conservation of angular momentum, they turn the satellite to a particular direction and maintain at that particular orientation. So this kind of uh, reaction wheels they used for this. And uh, if uh, because of this uh, vibrations are taking place, and then the picture quality of course will be deteriorating. So we can able to see that if vibration is less then we can have better picture quality as compared to when vibrations are there because uh, uh, at that uh, uh, distance around 700 kilometer even a one uh, uh, one thousand of the degree change in the orientation may give a, a different uh, quality of the picture so here in reaction wheel assembly also uh, at present mostly the rolling element bearings are used to rotate the flywheel uh, but now gradually the magnetic bearings are coming up in this application also like uh, this is one of the rig which we are developing in which uh, there is a flywheel uh, which is uh, supported by uh, thrust bearing as well as the uh, radial bearing uh, so so this whole rotor can be floated on air uh, and then the the bearing the rolling element bearing which get filled uh, in the satellite uh, satellite applications uh, here the AMB will be having advantage because AMB is having very long life so this is the test trick uh, under construction so uh, the magnetic bearing are now finding application several where several places because uh, lubrication requirement is not there so sealing and the uh, uh, low bearing losses and those aspects are not there uh, even this is being used for condition monitoring some of the uh, like for crack detection we have used using the magnetic bearing in the sh shaft which is rotated by a motor. So you can see the close view of the crack. So we try to characterize the crack uh, using uh, this, uh, not only suppressing the vibration of the crack shaft, but uh, utilizing that suppression force for finding out the characteristics of the crack. Uh, some more applications uh, like uh, advantage of the magnetic bearing is that the we can able to change the stiffness and damping of the uh, bearing, magnetic bearing, depending upon requirement, unlike conventional bearing, in which once we design and fab or choose the bearing, we cannot able to change its property. But here, through proper controller, we can able to change the damping and stiffness property, which uh, it is imparting to the rotor system. So with this, uh, now I'll come to the some basics of the magnetic bearing, especially in the rotating machinery. So as I have described that uh, often the rotor is floated on air through magnetic actuator, through magnetic force. Uh, in practice, there will be such four uh, actuators will be there, two in horizontal direction and two in vertical direction. So they will uh, apply force such that the rotor will remain in some particular uh, position and any deviation of the rotor from that position will be sensed by sensors which will give signal to the controller controller based on the reference position if there is a deviation it will uh, generate some signal 
which will be given to the power amplifier and power amplifier will give a corrective current uh, to the actuator so that the magnetic force can be changed to bring the rotor to its original operating position. So if you are disturbing this rotor, uh, then after very quickly, we can able to suppress this particular uh, disturbance. Maybe some few oscillations of the rotor may take place similar to the spring mass damper system. But uh, after a few oscillations, it may it will come to its original position. So this is a very basic uh, working principle of magnetic bearing. Uh, magnetic bearing as we have seen in several applications we have already seen. So basically there are three applications uh, of magnetic bearing. One is the whole uh, weight of the rotor can be supported. So uh, just like uh, conventional bearing, uh, the whole rotor weight supported by that. So magnetic bearing can also serve that particular purpose. Apart from that, if there is a disturbance in the rotor, so it can adjust the uh, magnetic force so that uh, the disturbance can be suppressed. So it is possible to control any excessive vibration which is taking place or uh, it can effectively and actively it can uh, suppress the vibration. Apart from that, the magnetic bearing can be used to apply additional uh, force. Like uh, uh, in uh, vibration labs, we have uh, uh, electromagnetic exciters are there to excite a particular dynamic system to find out its uh, characteristic. So this excitation also can be uh, done with the uh, this uh, magnetic bearing. Uh, which uh, like uh, we have done some experiment in which uh, in in place of a physical uh, trial and balance in the rotor we have put uh, virtual trial and balance so virtual trial and balance means through magnetic force we will generate similar force as the unbalance uh, mass will create so there is no physical uh, on balance we are putting in the rotor but through magnetic force similar effect can be generated we already seen some applications earlier we can able to generate the uh, aerodynamic force or uh, similar to or other kind of forces so same thing uh, here we can have the application of the as an exciter also so is having multi purpose uh, for the rotor bearing systems then coming to the some mathematical modeling of uh, such systems especially we know that if a mass is suspended by a spring and if this damper is also there so if we <coughs> uh, disturb this rotor what will happen it will oscillate and then after some time it will come to its original position now uh, when we are talking about the spring, mechanical spring, uh, what is the stiffness characteristics of that? So this is the mechanical spring force and this is the displacement. So if we increase the displacement, this, this spring force changes linearly and the slope of this is nothing but the, the stiffness of the spring. Uh, in the magnetic bearing, uh, rotor is floating on with the actuator. Uh, here there are two things. One is if we are changing the rotor position with respect to the magnetic actuator, the magnetic force will change. So this is that particular plot. If we change the uh, rotor position, magnetic force will drastically uh, reduce can able to see non-linearly it is uh, reducing uh, apart from that in the magnetic actuator if we change the current then also the magnetic force changes so that particular plot magnetic force with change in the current so if we increase the current magnetic force changes non-linearly square of the current 
so we have here in the magnetic uh, actuator two forces one is from the uh, means magnetic force depends upon two quantity one is the relative position between the uh, rotor and the magnetic bearing and another is the current which we are supplying and these forces are nonlinear in nature so what we can uh, do uh, because we know the this particular uh, rotor is having some weight that is balanced by the magnetic force uh, so that it remains in the that particular position so that but that is called operating position so there is a nominal gap uh, we will fix operating gap uh, at that particular gap we will be having uh, balance of the weight of the rotor with the magnetic force any disturbance from this is uh, this equilibrium position uh, if we are doing it so around this equilibrium position if we draw a tangent similar to here if we will get a line and the slope of that uh, will be you can show this here so slope of that around the operating position will give a stiffness linear stiffness so that we and uh, this linear stiffness the slope is negative uh, so a negative sign is here so this is called dis uh, displacement stiffness and here the displacement and the magnetic force is there same thing is for the current so to uh, float the rotor to balance its weight we will apply some fixed current and if any disturbance from that position then we will be additionally applying the controlling current so fixed current is the operating position around that if any disturbance is there so that means if we try tangent at the operating position the slope will give another uh, stiffness that is called current stiffness so here uh, unlike in the mechanical spring only one mechanical stiffness is there but here we have two stiffnesses one is the displacement stiffness and it is the current stiffness and they have been linearized about the equilibrium position uh, at which uh, rotor has to operate now this two can be combined so the magnetic force which depends upon the displacement and the current uh, so here we have combined the displacement stiffness and current stiffness x is the displacement i is the current so now you can see the magnetic force changes both with the displacement and the current and the kx and ki they will depend upon the the actuator design that means number of pole in the magnetic actuator number of turns in the coil the diameter of the coil and etc uh, the material property of the uh, ma magnetic material property of the actuator so kx and k will depend upon that similar to that uh, in this mechanical spring the stiffness de depend upon the geometry the coil diameter uh, and the wire diameter and material property of the wire so similarly here also it depends upon uh, the actuator design so coming to the now uh, dynamics of the this particular rotor system which is floating on air through magnetic uh, actuator so here i am trying to compare a rotor which is floating on uh, with the magnetic actuator with a, a mass or the rotor which is suspended by spring and damper system how they are connected how they are uh, they are equivalent so we have already seen that this particular rotor is uh, if it is there in equilibrium position but if we disturb this from its equilibrium position so we need to supply additional magnetic force so this is the additional magnetic force uh, which we need to supply because if there is any disturbance from the 
uh, initial position or if we are giving additional current this is the magnetic force now here the rotor is having only two forces because gravity force is balanced by the fixed current so that will cancel each other only the disturbance of the rotor uh, will be balanced by the magnetic force and because it's floating on air so there is no other force so this is the newton's law so inertia of the of this particular rotor will be balanced by the negative of the magnetic force now uh, we can substitute the magnetic uh, model here linearized model here and so this equation will become like this i brought the one of the term here now if you see if there is a current is not there the controlling current is not there we have negative stiffness negative stiffness that means the system is unstable so that we'll see in the next slide so if there is no controlling current if there is no controlling current then the response can be written like this and because of this term with time uh, the amplitude of vibration will increase physically it is something like if there is no controlling current if you disturb the rotor uh, it will drop directly because there is no force which is trying to bring the rotor to its origin original position or like in the this case here the mechanical spring and damper is there so it will not drop but here it's floating on air through the magnetic force so any disturbance if there is no controlling current it will drop so that is is showing the amplitude will increase uh, but if uh, we have controlling current because controlling current can have different model like a pd controller or pid controller pd is the proportional derivative controller so that is uh, if the current current is given by this expression so kp is the proportional t constant and kd is the derivative so if con the controller is governed by this law and kp and kd let us say we choose some parameter like this which contain the k and kx and some parameter k so this is some arbitrary choice of kp and kd which we are making it subsequently i'll show that uh, the controller design is very important especially the tuning of this kp and kd parameter is very important so here we are choosing this kp and kd uh, by this parameter if you substitute this here and if we substitute this i in the previous equation here if we rearrange this equation we will get a equation something like this and uh, you see this is a very familiar equation mx double dot plus c x plus k x is equal to zero c and k we have chosen parameter here so they are appearing like this and we know that this is nothing but a equation of motion of a spring mass damper system like this and this system if we disturb uh, we know that after some time it uh, get stabilized so that means if we are sup supplying the current such that uh, like this then the the amb rotor system will behave similar to a spring mass damper system exactly same it if you disturb the system it will come to its original position that means if we disturb this rotor by some small displacement it will be having some few oscillations then it will come to its operating position so it will behave similar to this but the choice of this is very important because uh, often uh, this may if the choice is this is not good often this may go into instability so the, this is tuning of the controlling parameter is very important to get the sta stable behavior so uh, i'll go more on the how to choose the those uh, kp and kp uh, uh, kd parameter so for that uh, we need to 
obtain the transfer function of the whole magnetic bearing system. So here we have the governing equation which, which we derived earlier. So now you can see that uh, we have the mass, the magnetic force is applied on that. So output is the acceleration. If we integrate that, we'll get the velocity. Further, if we integrate, we'll get the displacement. So displacement is the uh, output of the system. And if you see the displacement is multiplied by the kx, k into a kx, and the current is multiplied by the ki. And if you add this two, that is a nothing but the magnetic force. So this is a closed loop. You can see the magnetic force is given by uh, the previous expression which I give k into i minus kx into x. So this equation, if we do the Laplace transform, uh, so first term Laplace transform is this, second term is this, and if we do this, uh, we know that uh, Laplace transform of a double derivative will be having this form in which uh, k x naught is the initial condition of the displacement and this is the initial condition of the velocity and if we take the initial condition zero uh, this will give us the first term similarly Laplace transform of the current can be written like this so if we substitute this in the equation of motion we'll get in the Laplacian domain which can be rearranged to get the transfer function which is nothing but the output by input so here output is displacement input is current or the actuator so this equation will so this is a transfer function for the magnetic bearing similarly we can develop the transfer function for the controller so let us say if we have PID controller is there, proportional integration and derivative controller. So KP, KA and KD. So uh, so this is the so additional this integration term is coming uh, what we studied earlier. So in this particular case, if we take the Laplace transform of this again, uh, then integration will be having one bias this. So this is standard Laplacian transformation. So with this, we can able to develop the transfer function output by input. Here output is I and input is X because controller uh, is getting input X and then is uh, giving the output as the current. So this is the transfer function for the controller, PID controller. If we need the PD controller then I K I can be ignored. Then coming to the transfer uh, function of the overall uh, magnetic bearing and rotor system. So here you can see this is the block diagram for the controller. Even amp amplifier we can have some gain apart from the actuator and the rotor here and the sensor also we can have some gain because sensor senses the physical quantity and convert into the electrical quantity so its uh, sensitive sensitivity can be used as a gain uh, here so we have controller bearing amplifier sensor everything in this block diagram so with this uh, we can have the overall transfer function so here you can see controller amplifier rotor amb system and the sensor and this if we put previous block diagrams of the controller of the rotor amb system so everything we can able to put and get the overall transfer function so this is the overall transfer function so we already obtained kc kb so this can be rearranged to get the overall transfer function so here uh, the denominator we are getting a polynomial and uh, here the kp k i k d quantities are there in fact if this denominator is zero then the this transfer function becomes infinity 
so we need to choose this so so that it uh, so that uh, that condition is not there so you can see that now uh, if we equate this equal to zero uh, and uh, if we find out because now we can able to get the roots of this and the roots of this will give uh, basically the what the system is stable or not so we have some criteria like Routh Hurwitz criteria so what should be the parameter of kp ki kd so that uh, the system is stable so that kind of a Routh Hurwitz criteria especially in controls people use it so with that we can able to obtain the uh, this uh, condition or which the kp and kd and k to be chosen so uh, often we choose this kp ki kd uh, by trial and error method but certain parameters are there uh, to while choosing them so like uh, if this is this amplitude and this is the time if we let us say apply step force to a particular uh, system so step force means and suddenly applied step force so system will come and it will oscillate so finally it should come to this position because step force means some constant force we are applying but suddenly we are applying so there will be some oscillations also so once we are applying the step force let us say the oscillations is taking place like this so there are few things like uh, initial value is here but what is happening instead of going up it is going the on uh, below so that is called under shoot so kp ki kd will decide uh, how much over under shoot should be there because we know the when this particular system is there there can be a clearance between the rotor and the stator so how much uh, that particular under suit will be decided by the clearance so for different choice of the kp ki kd this under shoot percent may be different so this is one of the criteria another one is when we are applying a sudden load 90 percent uh, of the steady state when when it is reaching so it is reaching in a uh, time which is called rise time so it is reaching with this time time duration at 90 90% uh, of its original position so that is also important key what is the rise time and that also can be adjusted based on the kp ki and kd other parameter is uh, actual position is this bus but because this is a dynamic system is going other side of the equilibrium position that is called overshoot so that is also important how much or should we should al allow similarly the settling time key uh, the original position let us say if, uh, how much amplitude around the equilibrium position it is achieving let us say two percent around the equilibrium position when it is achieving then we can say this is settled so the settling time is also important so these are the some of the criteria by which we can able to choose the control parameter of a magnetic bearing uh, as i mentioned often we do it by trial and error or they can be optimized also people are using optimization methods also to do this because there are several objectives and they can be the objectives and based on certain conditions we can able to optimize their value so here you can see uh, the same plot but uh, for different combination of the kd ki you can see number of os oscillations are reducing if we change the parameter so this kind of parametric study can be done if we want to reduce number of oscillations uh, before it uh, comes to its study position so then we can have uh, this kind of variations and then uh, we can decide about the parameter <coughs> this is also similar parametric study we will not go into detail of this okay so 
now we have previously uh, explained a very simple one mass rotor system so here we are now what we are doing we are having a rotor more realistic as compared to the previous one which is uh, mounted on conventional bearing additionally there is a magnetic uh, bearing here at the center so we we are familiar with the equation of motion of a, a rotor system this is also single degree of freedom system so mx double dot cx k so these are k is the the conventional bearing stiffness c is also conventional bearing damping mass is the rotor of the uh, rotor mass additionally we have the unbalanced force if uh, this mass is having some eccentricity unbalanced force will be there which is generally given as m u omega square this now if you want to control this unbalance with a magnetic bearing if you mount a magnetic bearing here so corresponding force will come from the magnetic bearing that will be correcting the unbalanced um, force so that's why minus sign c is for the magnetic bearing force uh, and magnetic bearing force we already modeled using the k i n k x k small i n k x but current stiffness and damping and the uh, displacement stiffness i is the current so and k in k x can be obtained by uh, various parameter of the magnetic actuator like bias current original gap between the rotor and the actuator the pole angle between two uh, different poles ci is the magnetic uh, parameters number of coils area of the pole all those things are there mu naught is the permeability magnetic permeability of the material so now these can be substituted here and the current which we are uh, supplying is through the pd controller so for this is the law so now the magnetic force has been replaced by its force in terms of kx and ki and then uh, the ki is governed uh, i controlling current is governed by this so now uh, to get the response of the system in which the unbalanced force is there magnetic force is there we can write this in the state space form because damping is there to integrate that or so this is state space form in which basically a differential equation of second order is converted to two differential equation of first order so now you can see there are two differential equations of first order and uh, this there are various schemes are available to directly numerically integrate this and that can be used to get the uh, response of the system that means displacement of the system so this is the compact form in the matrix form of the previous equations in which uh, a matrix contain uh, all the rotor parameter and magnetic actuator parameter Uh, this is the unbalanced force this is the current controlling current controlling current as i mentioned is governed by the uh, pd control law so that also can be combined like this so now this has been replaced by the f is containing the kp and kd so a little bit mathematics is there but overall what we are trying to do we are trying to generate the response we have unbalanced force we have magnetic actuator integrated into the equation of motion and now we want the uh, response uh, at, there are two so in the previous case we will get the response with time so as the time passes how the rotor is behaving if we sometimes we want the response in the frequency domain that means we want to rotate the rotor from one speed to another and with speed how it is changing so 
the previous equation which we had in the form of uh, uh, this. So directly we can choose because unbalanced force is harmonic in nature. So displacement and the current we can able to choose in the harmonic form or uh, unbalanced force in the harmonic form. So controlling force and the displacement also we can choose the same frequency as the force unbalanced force and if we substitute this here we will get a equation in the frequency domain which directly can be obtained uh, displacement x is the displacement or various speeds we can able to get the displacement of the rotor. So we will see these two plots in a, through a one example. So same single degree of freedom uh, system is there in which uh, the conventional bearing property stiffness and damping is given uh, and balance of the rotor is given magnetic uh, bearing prop various parameters are given which will be used to obtain the displacement stiffness and the current stiffness uh, like uh, displacement stiffness current stiffness can be obtained like current stiffness is 29 newton per ampere displacement stiffness is this much newton meter so these can be used in the our previous equations to get in numerical form and we can integrate the this state space equation uh, so let me show the plot so this is the displacement with time so solid line is showing that the displacement when the amb is not there because now the rotor is in the conventional bearing so uh, we, we will be having motion uh, like this when the we have we don't have the magnetic bearing but when magnetic bearing is there you can see that uh, this displacements are getting reduced so vibrations are getting reduced drastically so this is in the time domain similarly in the frequency domain as i shown so here we can able to change the speed and then for every speed we can able to get the response and we can plot so this is when we are changing the speed of course when there is no amb we will encounter some resonance so when the spin speed of the rotor matches with the natural frequency there will be resonance so the solid line is without amb so we are encountering a resonance now you see when amb is there so is not encountering that resonance so safely we can able to cross the rotor about its critical speed here the this is the displacement amplitude versus speed here the phase of the rotor with the spin speed so generally when there is a resonance we have phase change of around pi degree so 3.14 radians so that much you can see change in the so wherever the resonance is there that change is there so solid line is without amb dashed is with amb so there is no drastic change in the phase because resonance is getting eliminated here so these are the typical two plots one is the time domain plot and another is the frequency domain plot so this gives the better uh, spectrum of the plot in which uh, when we are increasing the speed how the resonance amplitudes are getting suppressed so uh, there are we can have a more complex model uh, in which uh, uh, whatever the bearing we used earlier was having simple uh, stiffness and damping now basically is now two degree of freedom because rotor can have motion in the x and y direction so accordingly the bearing also we can have more complex bearing model in which we can have the uh, direct stiffness of the bearing and cross coupled stiffness of the bearing similarly this uh, this is the damping and this is the stiffness of the bearing and now we have two equation of motions and also they are coupled because of the bearing cross coupled damping and the stiffness we have unbalanced force magnetic force also now the 
actuator is acting not of there in the matrix form so same procedure we can able to follow uh, to convert this in the, the matrix form uh, into a state space form so that means is a second order differential equation there are two in number so if we convert into a state space form we'll be having four equation of motions so this is the state space form representation of the same equation in which now they are four in number uh, similar to previous one there is no uh, form of the equations are similar and uh, so this is all in the this is in the frequency domain now instead of in the variable form we have matrices but this is in the frequency domain so same uh, model with uh, two degree of freedom system with bearing property with di direct and cross couple terms we can use in this model we can generate the response uh, these are the all matrices which i showed uh, as i mentioned uh, when we could convert into state space form we'll be having four by four matrix so here also you can see the without AMB and AMB with AMB uh, with AMB drastic reduction in the amplitude of vibration is taking place uh, this in this is in x direction this is in y direction because now two plane motion is there uh, this is in frequency domain similarly we can able to obtain so now because this two degree of freedom system cross couple terms are there so there are two critical speeds when we don't have the AMB there will be two resonance but with the AMB we could able to eliminate both of them here base plot also you can see this is the first resonance second resonance but with AMB we don't have that phase change that much that was in the x direction this is in the y direction because both uh, uh, both uh, critical speeds will be visible in the both direction x and y okay so same analysis we can able to extend for the if we have multi bearing system multi disks using finite element method so i'll not go into detail of formulation of this the concept uh, is very clear uh, how we can able to mathematically model the rotor system and how we can able to integrate the magnetic bearing in this so with finite element method that can be done we'll just glance through the uh, some of the slides so we know the rotor can be modeled using elemental equations using gyroscopic couple also we can have in that an unbalanced force so then uh, additional disks can be modeled separately bearing can be modeled separately in finite element method then magnetic bearing can be modeled separately and then as usual finite element method uh, as we assemble the <coughs> various elements this uh, magnetic bearing also can be assembled along with the disk model bearing model so this will be a total equation of motion containing everything uh, we we have the two magnetic bearing model unbalance bearing stiffness rotor stiffness because now we are considering the the inertia of the shaft also so this is a typical equation of motion using finite element model those who are working in this topic they are familiar with uh, conventional thing only additional thing is uh, here 
magnetic bearing which we are adding it having a uh, displacement stiffness matrix current stiffness matrix current displacement so here the changes are there rest of the similar things are there so now this also can be analyzed uh, in the frequency domain uh, using whatever the procedure I described uh, and if we want the time domain data data we can convert that into state space form to get the response okay so here because this is a multi-degree freedom system apart from the unbalanced response we can have the eigenvalue problem that means we can able to find out the natural frequency of the system and uh, in fact the natural frequency of the system can be plotted here with speed because gyroscopic effect is there so the here natural frequency will depend upon the spin speed of the shaft so Campbell diagram can be drawn here by finding the eigenvalues at different speeds so this is the procedure for so this is a standard eigenvalue problem in state space form to get the uh, Campbell diagram so this is a typical example in which we have now multiple disc uh, bearings are there discretizing into various elements and then these are the property of the disc geometry of the shaft elements they can be combined and then you using straight space form we so plots will be similar so like here the node 3 displacement we have plotted with time and this with and without uh, AMB so with with AMB separation of the displacement can be seen uh, this in the node 3 in the y direction uh, here the frequency domain plot now here we can own several critical speeds so the solid line is with uh, without AMB so critical speeds are there and dashed line is with AMB so most of the cases those uh, critical speed can be suppressed with the magnetic bearing this is a phase plot so wherever the critical speeds are there change in the uh, things are happening this is uh, some other plots yeah. Campbell diagram I was talking about it's because here the gyroscopic effect uh, was included of the disk so we will be having the frequency which we will be getting or different speeds will be having some variation so here you can see there is slight variation if you see here and this gap is so slight variation of the uh, natural frequency is taking place uh, so when when we have this line this line is basically the wherever this line is intersecting the the natural frequency line there the critical speed so like uh, here we have the upper one is the forward critical speed and backward critical speed here also forward critical speed backward so so this is a pair of uh, natural frequency where intersections are taking place we'll be having using Campbell diagram we can able to obtain the uh, critical speed of the systems also forward backwards so they have been tabulated here so uh, now I will enter into the condition monitoring of the uh, this uh, rotating machinery with AMB but uh, before that I will just take a small break so that uh, check stop just want to
ओके जस्ट टू थ्री मिनट्स ब्रेक आई विल टेक एंड देन अगेन स्टार्ट Hope my slide is visible. Hello. Anyone? Participants, I hope uh, slide is visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, okay, okay. So <clears throat> now I'll enter into the uh, how the AMB can be used in condition monitoring. Uh, so initially, I will give a very abstract uh, definition of the condition monitoring. Then how AMB can help us in uh, this. So uh, we know that to rotate uh, rotating machinery. Generally, we measure the vibration from the bearing location or from casing or from the foundation and then based on the measured vibration, we try to find out the what kind of uh, possible fault is there, either looking into the level of vibration or frequency component or other things. And this is very, uh, because uh, generally, we don't have information about what kind of forces are inside. So only way we can find out the condition of the machine by measuring the output vibrations. So this is a feature based fault detection. So mainly the detection is possible or uh, localization and 
diagnosis is quite difficult for such case and here the also problem is there <coughs> a different fault may give similar pattern of the vibrations so distinguishing them is not easy so here the black uh, is representing that generally we are not much information about the system is there only the information known is the vibration and based on that we are trying to uh, get the condition of the machine here the information is unknown means especially the modeling of this machine is not used and then comes the another stage in which we uh, apply some known force to the system often it is done in the industry through some exciter we excite the system and we measure the response and uh, based on the input and output information we try to uh, find out a model uh, model model of the uh, system model model means uh, we try to find out to find out what is the natural frequency of the system what is the uh, damping in the system for different modes uh, even the mode shapes all those things are called model model and the change in the uh, system will reflect in these model mo uh, parameter and that uh, people try to uh, have some correlation if this pattern of the change in the uh, model parameters are there so the possibility this could be the reason in the uh, fault in the rotating machinery so here the input and output information used to get the model parameter and then that is used to uh, get the uh, condition of the machine so here blue is representing that initially we don't know this thing but we can estimate based on the green information which we have and then comes the <clears throat> more advanced in which uh, we we mathematically model the rotating machinery because we have now powerful finite element methods and by which we can able to quite accurately model the shaft disc blades so many things we can able to mathematically model it uh, even the gear uh, other things we can able to model it so we'll use uh, those mathematical model uh, <coughs> mathematical model of that and then uh, so those things will be known to us but uh, here some parameter which will be difficult to model like bearing is one of the thing or if uh, some fault is appearing in the system like crack is appearing or misalignment is there so modeling them or at least the characteristics of that is very difficult to uh, to find out so those things will be the gray area unknown area so here we have some input information we have output information and based on the input or output information and some modeling of the rotating system we will try to get this critical parameter uh, like bearing parameter or crack parameter or misalignment parameter estimated through input and output information so that is called model updating so here not only we can able to uh, we, we can able to detect the what kind of fault is there but even we can able to quantify it or we can able to localize also but those parameters should be there in the mathematical model like if crack is there in the rotor then which particular uh, location crack is there if that particular parameter is involved in the mathematical model that can be estimated if misalignment is there what is the misalignment parameter if it is there in the model that can be estimated so basically here we have mathematical model of the system with few unknown parameter we have experimental data 
uh, from here and here and those information we are using to basically put the mathematical model with the experimental data to get the system parameter so some kind of fitting we are doing with the mathematical model and the experimental data to get the unknown critical component parameter so this is <clears throat> but uh, as i as i mentioned earlier often the input to the rotating machinery is unknown like unbalance how much is unbalanced state is there we don't know in the system or misalignment is coming how, what is the force because of that is coming is not known so often people apart from this critical parameter estimation they estimate the unknown forces which are there in the system and indirectly that gives what kind of a, a fault level is there in the system so unknown force also we estimate based on the output only so this is another step then comes the the when the system is integrated with magnetic bearing so what is happening here uh, is taking this output response as a feedback to the controller then controller is giving a additional magnetic force to the system we have some unknown force already in the system but we are giving additional known force to the system <clears throat> and because of that what is happening the vibration which is there that is something like suppressed vibration because of this additional suppression force so now this suppressed vibration suppression force mathematical model of the system uh, these are used to obtain unknown forces in the system critical parameter in the system so this is a more uh, advanced and more uh practical uh practically safe because instead of giving a, a known force to the system because system is already is having some fault if we give more force to the system it will be having more uh vibrations so that is more dangerous so instead of that we are applying a controlling force and because of that some of the disturbance is getting suppressed but the suppression force is giving us the indication what kind of fault is there so that is utilized in the this particular procedure so this is a very abstract way of uh, representing what i will be showing in subsequent slides okay so now coming to the uh, this concept how we apply it to various uh, cases like one of the case we had the balancing so conventional balancing procedure is in which we have a rotor mounted on conventional bearings we have a number of balancing planes uh, usually we use influence coefficient method uh, to obtain the uh, unbalance correction unbalance in these discs through measurement at different locations so if we replace this uh, conventional bearing with the magnetic bearing so magnetic bearing is having one thing is when we are supplying the current so it is suppressing the vibration additionally we require anyway the displacement to be measured near to the mv so that we we can know the state of vibration of the system so that corrective magnetic force can be applied so this is a change in the configuration as compared to the previous one now <clears throat> here the influence coefficient which uh, which we are uh, which we model it actually that depends upon the unbalance and the response response means the displacement but here the influence coefficient we need to redefine that means we need to have a uh, current also involved in that so that is the difference so in conventional case 
here we have the uh, uh, we have the risk the displacement this is the influence coefficient this is the unbalance which we want to find out but in the present case when the magnetic bearing is there we need to replace this uh, displacement with the magnetic force and magnetic force we know we are expressed in terms of uh, displacement and the current so basically the magnetic force is containing uh, apart from the displacement of the rotor the current information also is included in this so this influence coefficient will be entirely different as compared to the conventional thing now so those who know the influence coefficient method they can appreciate that uh, only change is taking place here but definition of the influence coefficient is also getting changed so that's why we are naming it this as extended influence coefficient method so this is a test rig uh, in which uh, this particular method was uh, tried out i'll show the video of this maybe at the end of the lecture so in this uh, there were three uh, balancing plane were there two we can see here one is this one another is this one and uh, there were two magnetic bearing uh, this aluminium block you can see one this so this whole rotor of around one uh, around 0.6 meter was floating on air to this two magnetic bearing this side was the motor so motor was driving the shaft so we had the measurement uh, of the displacement at the amb location also at the disc location you can see there are displacement in x and y direction at the disc location so and apart from the current which we are supplying to the magnetic bearing so we use this test rig and the outline of the test rig is so this is a one overhang disc there are two discs which i showed in the previous picture uh, these are the amb location first amb location second amb location this is a coupling and motor was here so there are three balancing planes where we were trying to estimate the unbalance to balance the rotor and uh, in this uh, these are the property of the shaft and disc and other things so so this is a uh, this is a basically typical first we tested the algorithm with the numerical technique numerically and then we applied the uh, test data so this is a displacement at one of the disk location at time this is in y direction and the reference signal because we need to estimate the phase of the system also and in this uh, what we have done we have uh, ramp up the rotor that means we started the rotor at 0 rpm to 500 uh, hertz in a particular 30 second or 60 second and then we measure all the data in between so here you can see that uh, this is a particular uh, displacement with uh, hertz so when we are ramping up how the amplitude was changing showing here and the corresponding phase which we extracted using the reference signal so this data we used in our algorithm apart from that we had the controlling current as i mentioned of the magnetic bearing so there were x direction and y direction actuators current and it's a reference also so this is the variation of the current as we were ramping up the rotor from one speed to higher speed and this is the phase of that so he, uh, here you can see there are several critical speed in fact there were four critical speed we crossed uh, in this particular case so this yeah so so this is the uh, typical uh, five, uh, 500 rpm run out uh, run run down so there were four critical speed so we took uh, around 10 runs and uh, 10 independent runs and we estimated the unbalance 
so you, these are the for different unbalance unbalance for different runs so you can see this is the overhang disk the second and third disk unbalance so this uh, star is representing radial position is representing the amplitude of unbalance and the orientation is representing the angle of that and uh, here you can see that uh, a lot of variations of the estimates are there when we have different runs but in the second and third disk the pattern was around quite consistent there that was around coming here and also here so not much variation as compared to this was there but if you look into the amplitude wise the amplitude of unbalance was here less so that means this disk was having not much balance not unbalanced so that's why scatter was more uh, here they were having more unbalance so estimates were more consistent but still uh, variations are large uh, this at different run uh, that is the 300 rpm 3000 rpm run down so similar pattern you can see here also <clears throat> then uh, here the problem was in the previous case uh, as i mentioned previously uh, here magnetic bearing uh, parameter we theoretically estimated and used in the our uh, estimation so magnetic force which we obtained we used kx and ki but we calculated theoretically based on the whatever the parameter was there so that may have some uh, means sort of estimates of the parameter so we thought whether we can estimate that critical parameter also along with the unbalance so then we uh, used the finite element method to mathematically model the rotor amb unknown parameter uh, we were we were estimating apart from the unbalance so here uh, this displacement stiffness and current stiffness uh, using this uh, mathematical model these were unknown to us and they were critical parameter for us as i showed in the previous uh, i think uh, abstracts definition of the condition monitoring so we were estimating this also along with the unbalanced force so we rearrange this equation so that we can have the unknown quantity uh, in the regression form so ks ki of different bearing and the unbalance or other measurement and rotor model parameters were here so using this uh, we estimated the uh, uh, this uh, bearing parameter uh, this is the kx even we we had the two bearing in two x direction y direction and two bearing so so this is the variation of the uh, parameter for different runs so if you see the value they are not changing much but uh, in some range they are changing it so but we could able to estimate uh, this uh, bearing parameter also along with the unbalance unbalance i'll show me then the next slide so here you can see different run time so from minimum to maximum speed we reached in 20 second here when we used 30 second 60 second so this was a very fast run this was slow run this was moderate run and we found that at moderate run transients were not present in slow run sometimes uh, because it was slow so sometime it was getting locked into the critical speed when we were increasing the speed so it was going into the unstable zone so we found that 30 second run was optimal and uh, these so these are the displacement stiffness similarly we had the current stiffness parameter for different runs and apart from that the unbalance so unbalance estimations in three disks uh now when we estimated the bearing parameter also 
of the AMB. And then our estimates for different runs were quite consistent. So you can see 10 runs they are coming estimates are coming within these circles. So they are more consistent as compared to the previous in which the scattering was more. So this is the advantage if we can have mathematical model of some critical parameter like bearing parameter which is uh, difficult to uh, get the actual value so we can estimate them so that our other unbalanced estimation also can be improve, improved this is the previous one in which the scattering was more okay so now i'll uh, give some more uh, research topic which we have been working i will just give a very brief of various topics which we have attempted and uh, at the end i will give a demo of uh, some of the uh, i think uh, experiments which we have been conducting so here we used uh, magnetic bearing to uh, for flexible rotor balancing uh, using uh, influence coefficient method so whatever the previous uh, method we uh, the method we i described earlier in this particular case uh, one of my phd student he improved that particular method uh, in previous case uh, the conventional bearing was not there but in this particular case conventional bearing also the magnetic bearing both were there so that was the main difference so as we know that uh, so this i already explained that uh, what happens to balance a flexible rotor we, op we need to operate the rotor up to the operating speed and of often the operating speed is above the critical speed and a unbalanced rotor crossing critical speed is very difficult so with amb but that is possible because it will try, try to suppress the vibration and uh, so even the it can eliminate the resonance condition so we can be able to easily cross the critical speed and take the measurement and using that we can able to estimate the unbalance in the system so in this uh, even we tried out uh, uh, amb location like you can see there are rotor is mounted on conventional bearing having three disc one amb even we tried with uh, amb a different location like here then this other location we found that irrespective of the location of the amb uh, the estimates were coming fairly okay they were not deviating much because sometimes the constraints practical constraint may be there in the industry to have space available for amb at a particular location not of our choice but so with this we found that irrespective of the location of the amb we were getting the estimates quite correctly uh, appreciably so <clears throat> so this is the one of the displacement uh, with uh, frequency when we are accelerating the rotor without amb so continuously the speed of the rotor is we increased uh, this is a numerical simulation you can see the vibration level this is without amb with amb you can see so i was telling about the whenever there were resonance large oscillations were there but with uh, with the amb i think uh, this is the with amb yeah so with the uh, this can be eliminated during the measurement and this is actually when we estimated the unbalance and physically put into the system uh, and when we again accelerated the rotor so and without amb without amb this is without amb so you can see that after balancing how much uh, reduction we can uh, we can able to do this is in the frequency domain so dotted is without balancing and this with balancing but using the magnetic bearing procedure but uh, during the run up the active magnetic bearing was not active so this is uh, 
So this is the test trick for used for this. So this is a motor. This is the shaft. There were two bush bearing at the end of the shaft. There were two discs and magnetic bearing was here. Uh, here there are sensor displacement measurement uh, at two locations uh, at one of the disc. And uh, you can see using this procedure before balancing the vibration was this. And then after balancing, so we tried uh, two times. So both times the reductions were seen. Uh, actually, the reduction uh, because there was some bent in the rotor. So actual reduction is not evident here. If we remove the bend, then it will be more evident uh, how the uh, unbalance response get reduced. So this is an actuator which we used. This is a eight pole magnetic actuator. This is the controller which we use for this purpose. Then we extended the uh, that particular method. The often, as I mentioned previously, it is very difficult to rotate the unbalanced rotor at at, uh, at operating speed without balancing. So in this procedure, what we did, we we try to develop method to run the rotor at slow speed, take the measurement, and use that. Uh, to balance the high speed rotor. In in, in this particular case, even we, we use the virtual trial and balance. That means instead of putting the uh, physical trial masses on the disc, we use the magnetic force uh, similar to the unbalance. And that was so, so there is no need to stop the machine to put the physical unbalance in that directly through magnetic bearing during running condition we can able to uh, give a similar effect as the unbalance using virtual trial unbalance so this was another uh, work so the detailed algorithm is available in that paper i will not go into that so in this particular case here also uh, this uh, k parameter we experimentally obtained by giving some known force to the uh, to the disk and then measuring the current and through that we estimate it. So uh, current parameter we estimated experimentally separately using static loading method and we use that. So with that we got uh, better uh, results. So this is the same test take with uh, different overall procedure. So we took the measurement response and so this is the overall procedure of that. Okay, so this is, uh, you can see uh, when, so this is uh, the gray one and the dark one. So gray one is before balancing and the dark one with, with balancing, but uh, without AMB. So when we are running this, the AMB was not there in this. So you can see drastic reduction in the unbalance. So even at the critical speed, we could able to cross uh, with this. So this is showing different reduction uh, in the vibrations with and without AMB. And, okay. and then even we tried this, uh, uh, for the misalignment detection in the rotor. So in this particular case, what was the idea? So this is a rotor system. Magnetic bearings are there. So here, rotor is floating on fully on the magnetic bearing. So often, it is not possible to find out the alignment of the rotor in the AMB because AMB, the clearance will be of order of 0.5 millimeter or 0.4 millimeter and uh, by chance if our operating uh, position which we have set is offset and then there can be a misalignment uh, between the shaft and the bearing 
and once it is misaligned the magnetic flux which are there between the gap of the shaft and the AMB will be having non uniform distribution and then then it will start giving some additional force and moments so to detect that key uh, how much misalignment is there we we developed a uh, method using this 4 degree of freedom misalignment uh, rotor case so here we had a, a concept a new concept of uh, virtual uh, virtual misalignment like a virtual unbalance we gave in the previous case so here we gave a virtual misalignment additionally uh, virtual trial misalignment and that was used to obtain what is the residual misalignment in the system so concept is this key we are giving additional misalignment and that is giving information about the original misalignment in the system that concept is same as in the balancing of rotor in which we give some trial unbalances and based on the measurement of that we obtain the residual unbalance so same concept we applied uh, for the misalignment so here we use the mathematical model of the the two degree of freedom system and uh, so you can see here the rotor and the amb is perfectly aligned here there's a uh, some misalignment and then we gave additional misalignment and uh, information of these two we used to get the original misalignment of the system so here all mathematics is there in which we not only obtain the unbalance uh, eccentricity uh, the bearing parameter even the misalignment uh, level all those critical parameter we put them in a regression form so we have the nut in the nutshell we mathematically model the misalignment and uh, we had the parameter unknown parameters in the mathematical model we have numerically simulated data or the experimentally simulated data we are fitting equation with the experimental data to get the unknown so that is the concept we used to obtain the uh, misalignment even we use this for the crack and the bow and unbalance uh, uh, detection so in this we need to have the crack force model bow force model amv and then even the internal damping of the system so once they are there in the mathematical model their parameter will be unknown to us so we'll rearrange these equations so that uh, when we fit this equation with the experimental data this unknown can be estimated so that is the basic principle so this is the test trick which we, uh, we used for the crack detection so th this is the shaft with a crack uh, we had the v notch then with the three point bending we develop a fatigue crack at the notch tip so once it is initiated we we put in here and then we run the rotor so here you can see th there are conventional uh, bearings disc and this is the magnetic bearing and this is uh, displacement sensor even the current wiring and those things you can see so here other instrumentations like current measurement probes uh, amplifier uh, this is amplifiers controller dc supply to these things and then it their interface with the uh, software display software where we can see the signals so here the idea is uh, the previous slide i have shown the mathematical model of this system in that we had crack parameter unknown bow of the shaft was unknown and even the amb parameter was unknown so we measured the response of the system and fit it with uh, that particular mathematical model to get the uh, unknown parameter so this is the typical response uh, in the full spectrum because in rotor we we can have forward and backward world 
so this is a full spectrum amplitude and phase and uh, yeah this is the test X schematic the same thing so for more clarity like the motor is there then oh sorry this is different thing yeah this is a different thing yeah, this is for the gear another thing we tried with the uh, gear transmission error so you can see here uh, there are two gear uh, they are connected by so this is a pressure line and in this the transmission error we mathematically model that was unknown parameter to us even the guess the gear mess stiffness and damping was unknown to us so these were the unknown to us uh, in the mathematical model and uh, so this is schematic of the test trick for that so induction motor so torque sensor here and then the rolling element bearing then uh, this is the gear one gear and the second gear there are two shafts parallel to each other uh, so each shaft is supported by two conventional bearing and one magnetic bearing was there to control its vibration and uh, at the beginning and the end there were uh, torque sensor and at the far end there was magnetic brake so that we can able to apply some uh, res resistive torque so that the gears can have loading uh, so mathematical model of this system was there I'll skip these things uh, I'll go to the rig so in the rig uh, as I was showing there were two shaft one shaft is this second shaft is this uh, this is the, the motor uh, this is uh, one of the torque sensor uh, first bearing of the first shaft and then second bearing of the second shaft the magnetic bearing first magnetic bearing in the first shaft similarly the second magnetic bearing in the second shaft this is the gear pair so gear pair you can see more closely here and uh, we had the displacement sensor to measure the displacement near to the gear and here again talks transducer and this is the brake magnetic brake so we can able to change the level of brake uh, braking torque can be applied so that uh, we can load the gear so and then uh, various instrumentations and other things were there in which we had the uh, power amplifier uh, controller so and then uh, this controller yeah, this is for the I think torque sensor this controller uh, this is for a displacement sensor uh, so here this another view of the uh, rig so we you can see the displacement uh, when the active magnetic is active and when it is not active so you can see there's change in the amplitude of vibration here also is active and then suddenly we remove the current then uh, again displacements are more and uh, these are the current this is the uh, orbit plot of x and y direction because we measure the displacement both in the vertical and horizontal direction so with and without amb so red one is with amb so you can see is much better controlled vibration of the gear pair was there as compared to without amb uh, again we do the full spectrum of that particular orbit plot so in which we can have forward world backward world components uh, even we had the harmonics of the gear mesh frequencies okay so these were the activity which we have been doing on the condition monitoring of uh, uh, integrated with the magnetic bearing now i'll come to another uh, is just uh, not sure how to suppress this so so this is uh, future directions so as we know we have we have the laboratory test rig we have some input to this 
uh, rig and then we are getting the output and based on the input output uh, if we have data driven model like uh, AI, uh, this should be AI, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning software. So we can able to have digital twin of the test rig uh, for different operating condition. We can uh, measure vibrations or any other parameter and uh, this digital twin will then mimic similar behavior as the rig one. And uh, this uh, digital twin uh, can be like if we have different faults in the machine, one by one we can seed the fault, we can measure those vibrations, uh, change in the vibrations and that also can be trained. So this once it is getting trained, then it can be used to predict the future faults. So if similar future faults are coming, then this can be used. Or using this uh, digital twin so, but here main thing is there uh, is the data driven we are not using any mathematical model of the system just we are taking the input and output information and then uh, nowadays uh, the, because we have powerful uh, simulation softwares are there so whether we can able to simulate numerically simulate the the whole machine with finite element or whatever the uh, softwares are available and using that we can generate uh, data based on the various input uh, even we can generate uh, model various faults in the numerical model and generate response corresponding to various input so if if this model is uh, close to the actual one then that uh, this particular input output information can be used to obtain uh, AML software based uh, digital twin rather than the data from the experiment and that can be used to uh, predict the faults in the uh, basically in the actual system. So this is basically physics based the previous one is based on the purely experiment but pure experiment is very costly so people are now going over this in which they can use software to simulate the uh, data which uh, we require from the uh, acquire from the experiment and use that for developing the digital twin or alternately the recent trend is to integrate these two uh, data driven and the physical model both uh, can be combined so that we can have uh, whatever the knowledge of the uh, physics we have or the numerical techniques we have that can be utilized apart from the test data to develop a digital twin that can be predict uh, can be used to predict the system uh, response or maybe uh, some kind of uh, faults in the system uh, especially when we are talking about AI based now because this is very popular uh, technique there are several challenges uh, still are there in this uh, we have worked in this particular topic for last one decade I have not presented any result on that but uh, based on our experience and uh, uh, other what is it reported in the literature uh, a techniques there are plenty of techniques are there uh, which technique is applicable to which particular fault and that is uh, uh, we need to try out and then identify so still the single diagnostic procedure for identifying and isolating the any type of fault is not available so that is uh, one challenge uh, another challenge is if we operating parameters are changing so whatever the parameter or data we have, we have if we don't have the parameter corresponding to new operating condition then uh, it's very difficult to uh, pinpoint the fault so we need to develop some method by which even if operating conditions are changing 
we should have some kind of uh, insensitive uh, our method should be insensitive to the operating condition then data is enormous in industry so how to reduce the size of the data that is another challenge also the some faults some faults uh, give similar pattern of the response so how to separate them robustly uh, that is another challenge then the noise uh, in the sensor or the if measurement uh, sensor is failed then how to take care of those situations or multiple type of sensors like thermal sensor vibration sensor current sensor how to fuse them all the data and use for the purpose of uh, condition monitoring so there are so many procedures are there so uh, i'll stop here so these are the some of the references i which i used and these are the some of the references based on our data driven approach which i have not presented but some of our work of my phd students and amtec students and as a, as was mentioned about the book and then petel course on vibrations and rotor dynamics now i'll give a demo of the soft uh, video which uh, of the test trick so that okay so this is so this is the uh, you can see Uh, here one AMB is there, another AMB is there. There are two discs, and in the left side there is another O-rank disc is there. This is a, a displacement probe to measure the displacement uh, of the disc. So here we are accelerating the rotor through four critical speeds. Uh, and we are measuring the vibration continuously so is going up to the operating condition from 0 to 500 hertz and then we are coming down also and we are measuring the vibration continuously and using that for balancing of the rotor using the improved influence coefficient method which i described I'll give another video of this of the O-ring. Yeah, so this is the O-ring disc. So we can so initially the rotor was lifted on air, and then it start rotating. So now we are accelerating. These are the two displacement sensor. So is accelerating up to the operating speed where four critical speeds that is crossing so this rig was in the uh, germany Darmstadt during my postdoc i used this so is running up and then running down so finally it is it's getting stopped but we are using all the data of the run-up so here you can see uh, in one of our rig for balancing purpose when the amb is operating and when we remove the amb then how the vibration got increased so here you can see the control panel we can change the kp kd k parameter by knob and we need to do a lot of trial and error to get the stable system because as i mentioned in the previous with the block diagram tuning of this control parameter is very important so usually we do it manually to get the stable response because amb is always uh, Often it go, goes into in a stable region.
and this is a bias current in vertical and horizontal direction and then yeah this overall test trick uh, for the crack shaft so is a running condition crack is somewhere here this is the magnetic bearing by which we are suppressing the vibration and displacement so this is a reference signal uh, these two are the displacement signal all we are using for estimation of the crack parameter amb parameter so uh, fatigue crack was here and because there was bend so it is you can see there is wobbling a lot this is a magnetic bearing with eight pole so rotor is mounted on two rolling element bearing at the this end and that end so this is a close view of the sensor and the amb and then all those um, current measurement amplifier and the controller so this is a controller or con supplying the controlling current to the amb so here you can see the response so once they will activate the amb then rot displacement will reduce or if it is acting then if they will suddenly stop the amb response will increase yeah so amb was stopped so you can see response of the uh, rotor got increased this is the last slide so this is the running of the so here you can see the amb is this there are two discs and then all the instrumentation amplifier uh, this is current measuring probe these are amplifiers and then this is a con controller or controlling current to the amb controller unit and here the response sphere so here again i think uh, amb will be stopped or, or it will be active so this is a response displacement of the shaft and here all those control panel for tuning the ke kp kd and the bias current so now switching on of the amb so you can see one of the there are two amb so green one is one of the amb was uh, kept on so displacement in that direction got reduced the other direction displacement is more now is uh, operating the second amb also so once it is operating the second amb uh, other direction displacement also getting reduced so this is the overall demo so stop here Okay. Thank you, Professor Diwari, for your very informative and interesting lecture. Now I'm going to request uh, the participants. Uh, they may have a lot of queries, I know. So they can post their queries in the chat box. <coughs> to, uh, I think my uh, screen sharing is over, no? No, so screen is uh, visible. Visible. How? No. So how to stop that? Oh.
was what to stop yeah yes sir yes, yes. no yeah so participants are from where uh, morning sir uh, the participants are uh, basically from across the country uh, including both academy and industries so okay, so okay. we have a very diverse uh, audience okay okay and sir uh, there is a question in the chat box from uh, suraj k behera uh, that uh, sir uh, can you please share the company details from where uh, we can purchase a amb test setup uh -huh. i can give the detail but uh, is very costly skf they sell the test rig that is a table top bench table top amb test rig and that is i think 1 crore minimum so i got skf okay skf they sell so if you can have some project through which if you can procure uh, you can have otherwise we have made our own everything we made our own so within uh, making amb is not costly uh, main cost cost is in the instruments the controller and the uh, measuring sensors and other things so if you yeah so better to make your own that is much and you will be having flexibility because the skf uh, i think uh, amb they will they will tune the amb parameter for a particular configuration if you change that it will not work so but if you are making your own then you will be having flexibility to whatever you want to do any other question so there is one more question uh, from dr lakshmi kan damande uh, what care is required to be taken for amb any disadvantage of it uh, disadvantage is uh, uh, main thing is uh, often it go, go into the instable zone so tuning up the uh, control parameter and uh, apart from tuning then tune so that it is safe enough if there is a large disturbance even if you tune for a particular operating condition it may go to unstable region if uh, if disturbance is large enough and another disadvantage is anyway it is uh, still very costly especially the controller and instrumentations that is the main but for crit critical applications anyway uh, the that should not be a problem yeah so these are my answers so thank you sir if there are any other questions so i request the participants to post it in the chat box <coughs> i think there are no more questions so now uh, let me end this uh, with a vote of thanks to on this memorable occasion so first of all i would like to thank our guest and resource person professor rajiv tiwari who despite his busy schedule has found time to grace this occasion uh, professor has uh, given us a very beneficial talk for researchers and academicians uh, who are involved in the area of condition monitoring Uh, i am sure that all the participants must have enjoyed and got benefited from this informative talk so my heartful heartfelt thanks to all the dignitaries organizers organizers and participants too last but not the least i once again thank uh, you all for showing patience in listening the talk and making this event a success so thanks a lot thank you professor yeah thank you to the all organizers including faruki and Sidra, thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye. So our next session will start after a brief break at eleven fifteen. So it is by engineer.
Hemant Bari, who is from Adani Electricity, Mumbai Limited. So we will come back at 11.15. <clears throat>